Welcome back everyone, Mike McConville here again, Stratford, Ontario, Canada. We have another iconic D28, this one's brand new. Now David showed up at my shop, I've done some work for him before, so we went ahead with a brand new bone cantilevered compensated nut. So I'm bringing you in just to show you all the details on this guitar and what I did to calibrate this guitar, So that, and you'll hear it in a second, uh, so that it plays impeccably in tune across the entire span of the neck. So there is our bone compensated nut. Anyone who has had to replace one of these nuts knows that there's a lot more geometry going on. And of course in this case we've compensated all the way across. Now, these are 12 to 53. Let me... And there's a look at the other side of the nut. And this is a look at the bone cantilevered compensated saddle. Now we did put ebony bridge pins in there. And one other thing I wanted to point out. You have seen this in other videos. I do routinely put an extra strap button underneath the input jack which is no longer used as a strap button. This way when you put your strap on the leather strap acts as a strain relief so that if you step on the cord or someone else steps on your cord when you're plugged in the input jack never gets the hit. And this now will never loosen up. By the way this is a K&K &K Mini system that we put in this. I'm just so enamored with this guitar acoustically. I want to play it acoustically first and let you hear it. Uh, and then we'll plug in and you can hear the K&K system. And this is the location of the strap button on the underside of the heel. This is the most solid place on the whole guitar where the dovetail is received into the head block. Once he straps that on, it's not slipping off. I think it's fairly safe to say that the D28 is the dreadnought by which all others are judged. So we'll just go through some chords first. So that A, A major 7. There's a B minor. D. E. F. And G.
another test I've used in past videos, just taking that garden variety C form chord, and I'm putting the fifth on top there, the first string, and then move it up to the eighth and tenth fret, which is essentially a G chord. C, and this is a series of diatonic sixths and a tenth on top, or a third moved up one octave. So because all of the open strings are available in the key of G major or E minor, I'll do another exercise, and I have done this in past videos, where I play the open string. On the inner strings it would be. bottom set of strings. So this kind of makes for some interesting harmonic mechanisms that you can kind of hop around the neck. I'm doing it at this point to sort of illustrate the intonation across the entire span of the neck, but just for musical ideas. You can take those mechanisms and just hop from one group of strings to the next. Or across three groups. I'm starting in the bass in this case. So it's just a great way to come up with kind of harmonic sketches and melodic lines based on these diatonic structures of a sixth and a tenth.
never ceases to amaze me the sheer output of these K and K Mini passive system. No batteries. So you never have to worry about remembering to unplug your guitar because you're going to kill the battery. Those 9 volt batteries, everybody knows, they're not cheap. They're, you know, five, six bucks a pop, right, for good ones. But the output of this guitar without a preamp, this is just straight into my lab series. <laughs> It's nice that you could actually attack the strings that hard and it never really breaks up. And I really think that the reason these are becoming more and more popular is because you don't get the, the infamous quack that you get when you have something under the saddle in the bridge. These are just those three tabs. Now you got to get it right when you install these. And obviously over years of bench testing, K and K have deduced that the transducer for the top two strings lines up dead center with the first string. Of course, this is attached underneath on the bridge plate. And then for the middle two strings, the tab attaches dead center between the two strings. And for the two bass strings, E and A, same thing. That transducer tab, both the diameter of a nickel, attaches to the bridge plate with super glue. They give you tape, but don't go there. You want super glue. They adhere to the bridge plate, dead center between the sixth and the fifth string. And by eliminating that whole concept of sort of sticking something underneath the bridge saddle, we get a lot closer to the, the natural sound of the guitar. Now in this case, this D28, I mean, I was so enamored with the sound of the guitar acoustically that I completely forgot to even plug it in, and that's why I'm making this video so you can hear. You can hear this guitar plugged in. Now I have a fairly hard pick here, so for strumming a lot of people would use a lighter pick than what I've got here. But. another angle on this pickup. Here's some finger style. an exercise in C major. So I'm sticking to the middle two strings because it allows you to have a little bit more spread on the melody uh, branching off from these uh, diatonic tenths. So we're playing diatonic tenths in uh, C major, so all the alphabetical notes on the guitar. It's kind of a fun way to discover all those notes. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
this scale with these. So this would be G major. Ascending. This is also a great test, obviously, for your intonation. So same key middle four strings, well, middle three strings. strings. Even for punching out rock and roll rhythms, this guitar plays great now. So I've done my duty, you've heard the K&K &K system, but more importantly you've heard this amazing D28 guitar. It is wondrous to play. So responsive. Strumming, finger picking, whatever, that's a wonderfully responsive guitar to play.